You were born again, and the Bible says in Ephesians chapter number 2, verse number 6, and this is the verse I want you to look at, and then we're fixing to unpack this authority. And, and like Peter says, you're about to be turned into a weapon of mass destruction. It says, verse number 5, even when we were dead in sins, hath he quickened us together by grace you have been saved. And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Okay. I'm through laying the foundation. Let me just lay it on you now. Salvation shifted my position. It raised me up. And made me sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Which means I occupy the same rank of authority in the realm of the spirit as Jesus. Which means I am in a spirit spiritual class of authority that is far above principalities and powers. Far above powers, demon spirits. Far above everything in that realm. Far above angels. Far above everything in that realm. You and I are the highest ranking beings. In the spirit realm. Now why did God give you such a high rank in the spirit realm? Is because you have been given the assignment to control spirit beings. You do understand that this is why God made you part spirit. You are not just a physical body. You are spirit. And this is why God created you spirit in flesh. So when you look at me, the reason I keep harping about the, the spiritual dimension is because when you look at me right now, you can't see me. You're not looking at me. You're looking at my body. I'm on the inside of the body. And it is me, the spirit, that's given this body life. That's why when I exit my body, it has to die. <laughs> because my body can't keep functioning without my spirit in it. But my spirit can keep functioning without my body. Oh, it's the real dimension. And you today have got to quit seeing yourself through the natural lens. Now, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I love it when my wife gets into the mirror and she does her hair. And then she asks me what it looks like. And you always men have to say it looks amazing. Uh, don't ever, don't ever say what you think. And so I love it when she gets in the mirror and she puts on the eyeshadow and the makeup and all of that and comes out looking just gorgeous. All of that is great. But while you're in that mirror, you need to see what you look like in the spirit. Because all of that is just dust and flesh. But on the inside of all of that hair and skin is a resurrected spirit with the authority of God Almighty. That's the way you got to see yourself. That I am a spirit being wrapped in flesh and I have authority. Watch this in two realms. That God has given me dominion in the earth. And then he has given me dominion in the spirit. 
Why must you understand this? Because this is the position you occupy. You have been seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Oh, I got to have my chair back. because Somebody give me a chair. Just, just snatch me one. I, I can't preach without my chair. Uh, I'm just more anointed with my chair. The Bible declares that this is a position of supreme authority and power that when he raised Christ, he seated him at his right hand. And then the Bible says, and he raised you up and seated you with him. You don't even sit beside him. You sit with him. Which means you and Jesus occupy the same seat. If you had any idea what you look like to demon spirits. That the moment you got born again, God let every principality and power know just like you have to submit to me. Now you have to submit to them. Now, you and I both know what happens to demon spirits when they rolled up on Jesus. Y'all know what roll up mean down here, don't you? It's the same thing that's going to happen to them after they roll up on you after today. You are about to put some things in their place. Now, I have to give you this caveat. Because this is something that has to be known to you. God ain't going to do that for you. You better hear me today. Because it is your responsibility to do it. You say, now wait a minute, preacher. Show me that in the Bible. I'm glad you asked me. He says, upon this rock I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom. And whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. I came to tell you that there is nowhere in your Bible that God told you to pray about the devil. Find it. Show it to me. It ain't in there. You want to know why? Because the devil is not to be prayed about. The devil is to be cast out. There are other things we need to pray about, but the devil ain't one of them because you have been given authority to deal with him. This is something that the church has a hard time receiving. Because we don't want the responsibility. But you've already been seated in heavenly places. You have got to deal with him. That's why your Bible says when the enemy comes at you, don't pray about him. Resist the devil. And he will flee from you. Which means as long as you whining and crying and complaining about what's happening in your life, Satan will chase you as long as you're running. But the moment you turn around and quit running and say, now wait just a minute. The Bible declares if you resist him, he'll start running from you. I'm looking for a generation that will say, I spent my last day running from devils. From this day forward, they go be running from me.